Okay. So, you can play on any odd size board if it's odd square. So, let's take a. Let's just pretend that those are square. I already counted. Well, this is an 8 by 8 but so you wouldn't play on this, but I, I can show you gameplay with this. It doesn't matter. Okay. So... <laughs> Uh, you can number and letter these things if you like, but I don't do that. Whatever. Um, you have black and white stones. Um, always placed first, unlike chess. Black is considered the weaker opponent. And so if you're playing an uneven game, like if you're playing with me and I'm much better than you, then I'm going to play white and you're going to play black. If it's an even game, you can do this process where uh, you take uh, the, the person who plays black Will, or the person who plays white will just take a handful of stones, put them on the, put their hand on the board like this. The the player who plays black will either take two or one, and they're they're betting. This is odd or even number of stones. So if they put two down, you count this out. Okay. That's odd. So white wins. It's white. That person who had white gets to play white. Person who wins gets to be the better player. That process is called neat. This is just etiquette. So, Go is a game of liberties. If you have a black stone right here, how many liberties do you have? What is a liberty? It has four liberties. You can see in four directions. Okay? So, you can go in four ways. How about if we put another black stone? It's much bigger. Right here. I'm an artist. So. <laughs> Serious. I get paid for this shit. <laughs> How many liberties does this group have? Okay, good. So, what if we put another black stone right here? How many liberties does this group have? No. We have two groups. This has six, and this has four. So, it's, it's very about seeing along the line. Now, if you were to put another stone right here, how many liberties do you have? A lot. <laughs> good, good. So in this case, they're connected. Without that, they're not. Connection is important. If you want to capture a stone, uh, let's pretend that there's a white stone right here. OK? So black will play here. And, and the stone is removed. So this is one of the things you want to do. Go. Um, but it's not the only <laughs> it's, it's actually really kind of complicated but, but um, the thing that you want to do the object of the game go, is to capture more territory than they want. Okay. so what is that <laughs> I can't even tell you <coughs> let's pretend we have another board I'm just going to draw a line on this one Let's look at this situation. There are some other things I should tell you while I'm drawing. Um, let's pretend that this stone, um, this situation is like this. There's no stone here, right? White has been captured already. Is white, you think, allowed to play back to this area on the next turn? No, because it has no loop, right? Every stone that's on the board has to have OK, so you can't, it's a legal move to play back. All right, since you guys are hackers, What if we have this situation? Oh. There's a white stone here, here, here. 
It's White's turn. Where do you think White wants to go? Middle of the black one. So White plays here, captures the stone. Now it's black. Where does black want to go? Back here. Well, that's a problem, right? We have an infant. Right? <laughs> Sorry? Excellent question. So when white takes here, there's no more stone, right? White has a liberty. So white's left. So capturing happens first, right? When you place, and in placing you can capture, then you have liberties that are allowed. Playing here, after the stone has already been removed and you're white, you want to play back? No liberties? Can't capture? Okay. So, situation. You're white. Oh, good question. This is called the rule of Comey, and it's one of the only rules that you have. So what it means is white, or, okay, so white plays here, captures black. Black's not allowed to play. The next, it's elite. Okay? So black plays somewhere else, like here. White can either end the co by playing in here, right? Or if somewhere else, and black's allowed to take it. So what this says is the board cannot reach it. And this way you avoid it. Now, one of the questions that hackers always ask, okay, well, what if you play a move and then 129 moves later, it's the same board again? I don't know. <laughs> There's no there's no rule for that, okay? So uh, if you're going to write it down and make sure that it doesn't happen 129 moves from now, you can do it. But um, generally, it's just the one move thing. That's how you do it. So. Sure, exactly. So come up here so that I can show you on the board. It, it, this is limited in some ways. So this is basically what the situation is like. OK. So is this our visually uh, healing? So it's black turn, right? Black plays here, captures white. So white's gone. White's turn. White plays here. So that's white plays somewhere else. Black turn. Black can end the co by playing here. So there's no more contest. Black plays somewhere else. Board's different. White's allowed to cap. That's rule of cup. I said Comey earlier. That's wrong. <laughs> um, so let, let's look at this for a second. I'll put it on the board here. In this situation, can black be capped? <coughs> Let's imagine we have a whole lot of white stone. We'll just stick them all the way around and block up all those liberties. Mm -hmm. Do I want to? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Thanks. I don't even. You don't have your chair. Your chairs are. Okay, so we're just going to block up all your liberties with white here. And white capture this group. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Glad you're here. <laughs> hey, you didn't take it. Um, so so can, white, can, can white capture this group black stone? What would white do? Somebody. Anyway. Do it. <coughs> and you see, in doing this, all the black stones would be removed, right? Okay. Let's look at another situation. What about this? Okay. Well, let's plug up all these liberties with white. Can this black group be captured? Who wants to play white? Okay, what happens if you're white? Where do you want to go? Oh. <coughs> Try to go. 
Well, we already looked at that. That's illegal. No liberty is not on the board. You want to go there? Same problem. No, because look at look at the um. Okay, where which which stones would be captured if white place? But they're connected to these, as we see, right? So these are unconnected, as we saw. Okay. So and these are connected. Exactly. So when you you capture when a group has no more liberty, right? So does this group have no more liberty? It has one. So since white playing here is an illegal move and it comes off the board, this black can no longer ever be captured. It sinks completely. So that means that in this situation, black has two points of character. So in all of this work that you've done, you have two points. Yeah. Now, let's pretend that in doing so, you lost these four stones. You would have negative two points. <laughs> because your prisoners count against you. So that's how you do the scoring. Yeah. Your score is the amount of territory that you own minus the prison that you lost. So, a game of 19 by 19, if you play on which uh, we're going to get into, there's a couple places you can play on the internet. One is IGS, and then Go server. It's older than the internet. It's based on an IRC protocol, and it's been connected to players. Games go for about 45 minutes, which is about normal gameplay so for people who play regularly. Beginners, I played with. Other way. <laughs> <laughs> I played with a beginner once, and we had a game that went for six hours. So don't let that happen. <laughs> one of the best, one of the best advice I ever got when I was learning Go was lose your first hundred games as quickly as possible, <laughs> because when you're sitting there thinking about things. You don't really know what you're thinking about yet. You need to just play and get a feel for this This group is safe, this group isn't. Like, if I play here, then this stone is going to get captured and it's not connected to this. There's all these different patterns that happen all the time, just like in chess and other strategy games. You start noticing patterns, and then you can start actually strategizing. <laughs> Lose your first 100 games as quickly as possible. <laughs> so, <laughs> you play on a 9x9. Nine nine. <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> you play on a 9x9 nine nine because in a 9x9, nine nine, if you can imagine, about this size, you get into complex situations immediately, right? So you, you start noticing patterns very quickly, and games go much faster. So you both start noticing patterns, and you both get better quickly. That's what you do. So this never, ever, ever, ever happen. <laughs> ever. <laughs> it's an example to show you how a group cannot be captured. But to get this situation is very, 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 very rare because people don't play in these patterns. <coughs> okay, who wants to play back? The score is not always negative. In fact, with reasonably experienced players, players who've played more than 10 games, there's almost never a negative score. So. <laughs> Played, played. Okay, so. No. I mean, like, if you have no stones left, right, you have one stone, and they have one stone, and you have 20 prisoners, and they have 20 prisoners, you just trade them, right, the score's the same, but then you have stones to play with. That's the only case that you would reuse um, prisoners, but not in gameplay. No. So, what I want to ask is, what is a reasonable first move? On a 19 by 19 board. Who wants to play black? Take the corner. Can anybody tell me why this is a stupid move? <laughs> <laughs> Two liberties. Good. So, what would white do? Play there. Oh, one liberty left. This is called Atari. Atari means you only have one liberty left. So, you want to gain liberties? Play there. You have two liberties. Good. <laughs> One liberty. This will go to the end of the board, and black will lose. So, this is a stupid first. Move. How about another first move? Who wants to play black? Directly in the center. What is this game? All liberty. Four liberty. 
All options open. Anybody tell me why this is not such a good move? That's a reasonable thing to think about. It's neutral. You have no control over anything, right? You have option to go in any direction, which means that you don't have control over anything. Bad, oh, whatever. You don't have odds to be the first one. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> okay, so who wants to play first move? Show me, show me. One of these dots. Like, they're there for a reason or something, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> okay, these are called star points, and they don't mean anything special except that they help you count it, right? So it's like 19 is a big grid. Okay, that's three, four, whatever. Right? Star points. This is a very, very, very common first. Why? Why is it a good place to play there? Yep. Four liberties in all directions. You're putting a flag in the corner. Okay? It's going to be hard for you to capture this. Because I'm already. Right. So, what do you think White would respond to that? Oh! <laughs> or that, or that. So, there's. Opening moves are a science which I am too naive. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's this thing called Joseki, and it's a. <laughs> um, it's a 4,000 year old science and there's all kinds of theories about it um, I've, I've played enough to know that opening moves really do matter so you play here the difference between playing here and playing here might be big, might not be I don't think it's that big the difference between playing here and playing here very big, very big. <laughs> right so um so that's something to think about. There's there's common pattern for opening called Joseki. So this is a common move. 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 You can imagine everything in this area about the same good, right? <laughs> you can see that, right? It depends on how you want to play your next move, right? So if you play here and you're sure that your opponent is going to play here, right? Then maybe you don't want to play there, right? You're like, if I do that, you know he's going to do that. So maybe I'll do this, and that's stronger, right? Because if he plays out here, then I play here, and I've got control of this spot. So that's why you might not play. So. Let's see. Um, when you start playing with really sophisticated, which I do need, there's a group called the Brooklyn Boat Is the... Uh, Go Club has existed in the 70s because it's near the uh, American Go Association headquarters. And it's very tied into that. And so you have a lot of very good players. Very good players have all of these ideas about etiquette. <laughs> Some of the things is that you hold your stones like this. I don't really know why. <laughs> I don't know the history. But it does make this really satisfying thing when you uh, do that. <laughs> and uh, I think that's why, really. End of the day, they're really good because they have these all these aesthetics about the board like this, like this. Thing. Exactly, you can get very expensive go boards if you're into it. So, uh, so I, I think at that point, it's an aesthetic, <laughs> <laughs> and it's his, which is ours. <laughs> I didn't bring my board. Um, so if if you want to be, um, you know, pretentious like that. Um, but you know. You should look at your local chess shop, and they might have one in the back that's dusty. That's how I got my first. <laughs> so, uh, failing that, the internet. There's a lot of really good stuff, from very cheap to very expensive, you can find on the internet, various places. That's expensive, but sure. But they're not good. <laughs> they're not as good as this. <laughs> what? <laughs> there's not there's not such good stuff in Denver actually. I was really excited about them and then I played with the Brooklyn Globe Club and they have real boards. And I was like, Wow. Yeah, they're cheap. They are cheap actually. <laughs> <laughs> no. I got them at yeah. your local mall store, it's your move. And also I brought some of those boards with me, so like them. 
I definitely go with a um, wooden board over a cardboard board like this. Um, but this one's big, so it's easy to show you. Orkla? That's something. I think that you'll find if you travel that Go is more popular in almost every other place. I haven't been to South America or Canada like or anything. Soccer. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's very much like soccer, soccer in that sense. But um, there's, a, there's a lot of clubs in Europe and uh, lots of competitions. And stuff there. <laughs> in Asia, Asia, I haven't been, but I have a feeling. Um, so. So, so I want to play a, a nine by nine game with somebody, anybody here, um, while we all watch. We can talk about the movie. The game. <laughs> that's one of the most difficult questions to get up. The game is over when both players pass in success. So when I say there's no better place for me to move, I pass, and you say I agree, pass, end the game. Knowing when to pass <laughs> is something. Beginners have very big problems. <laughs> so maybe we'll just we'll just show that as we get to exactly. And if you do it at the wrong time, you will be pwned. <laughs> yeah, actually it is. You can go again. Or you can pass and they can play, and you can pass and play. And if what they're playing doesn't help them, then that's good. So, <laughs> fight among yourselves for who wants to play me in this 9 by 9 game. All right. No, no challengers? No challengers? It's girls against boys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is our nine by nine board. <laughs> I'm gonna play white. <laughs> and I'm how do you know? <laughs> and I'm gonna let you take two stone handicap. So what that means, you get to take two stones on the board before I start. Playing. When you play with um people that you're not evenly played with, oh I should tell you about this. Um <laughs> doesn't matter really so much with beginners like you just play you're if you're differently matched you start having to have like I'm beating you every time I have problem. Playing Go Club, even if you're not playing <laughs> even if you're not playing competitively, you're gonna wanna have a rank so that you know how to handicap your team. So I'm something like a thirteen Q and I play with one Dom but I take nine <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, but your ranking is, is weird, right? Okay, so for amateur players, your Q ranking, and the higher your Q ranker ranking, the, the most beginner. Right? So when you first start playing in the numbers, I'm just going to say 20 Q. So your first game, you're a 20. Okay, I'm something like a 30. And when you're a 1 Q, you get to do this stuff. And if you're, if you're good enough, you just call yourself a 1 Don and go up to Don. Level, so the higher your dawn level, the <coughs> and then there's P, which is professional. So people who are professional have gone through a, a testing thing. Uh, we don't have, to go there. <laughs> but they it's a really big deal in in Asia, and in fact you can play Go as a living in Asia by winning titles. Maybe some people like us here, so you have to go through this process. So if you're just really good and you haven't done this, you know what? Yeah, I don't, <laughs> actually. <laughs> They're all Asian guys. Come on. Sorry. Okay. 
So he's like, what's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay. So um, <laughs> when you play a nine, sorry, when you play a uh, nineteen by nineteen, your handicap points usually go on star points. So if I'm playing a nine um, stone game, and you're a one don, then I'm gonna put stones on all of the star points. So that's what a nine stone game. Right. And you can imagine this is a little thing. I'm still. <laughs> fucking time, man. It's crazy. So, so that's what a nine stone game looks like. You don't usually go above nine stones, and if you're playing with more of a handicap than nine stones, you can just play, basically. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, um, when you play a nine by nine, and you're doing two stones, it's mostly like that. There's some people that let you just put them wherever you want, but you've been playing a little bit, and you want to put them wherever you want, you know, one of those places. Anyway. So. <laughs> So here's our two stone game. Let's play. Is it better to create groups or to create lots of little places? Depends on what point in the game. In the very beginning, you want to just spread out. This is my thing. If I drop 100 parachuters of German. <laughs> The likelihood that two of them are going to meet up and do something good is better than if I drop them all in one. They're all good. So in the beginning of the game, you do that. If you're losing, <laughs> or you have a group that's in trouble, you need to fortify that. And if one of your group is threatened, then you need to focus. In the beginning, basically one. Keep asking questions anyway. That's what this is. Trust your instinct so, <laughs> so quickly because that's going to lose, 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 lose quickly. Lose quickly. That's what I'm going It depends. <laughs> See, I play um almost exclusively It's really hard to explain why I do the things that I do. But for example, if this was a nineteen by nine. And, and my first, your first move was here, right? And my first move, or my second, my first move was here, and your second move was here. My third move would not be here. I'll tell you that. Right? <laughs> my third move would be over here, right? Okay. Because I want to try to be in as many places as my opponent is, right? And just because this has six liberties, four, doesn't really help me at this point, right? Because I want more space than you. And you're not threatening that, right? Like, this still has four liberties. It's no big deal. So essentially, a land grab right. first. Now, if you're here, right, I'm not going to play here. I'm going to play here, OK? <laughs> because I'm threatened, right? So you j in, in, in the beginning, you want to be in as many places as possible. When you're threatened or when you're trying to really build something in an area, like here, she's trying to build something over here. And I'm going to try to kill her. And we'll see if that happens. But. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. No problem. No problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in here, her, her her next if if I play around here somewhere, like let me just pretend that my next move is here, right? She's gonna want to build in here instead of like trying to get more space over here or okay. something, right? But in the beginning, you want to be in as many places as possible. I'm gonna move there. Okay. <clears throat> No, see, this is where I'm starting to lose it. Well, well, here's where we get into strategy. Okay. I understood that move. Good. Who didn't understand that move? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
watching this on a seven second delay and it just messes with my mind. <laughs> <laughs> seven second delay, what are you censoring? <laughs> yeah, no swearing. I'm not a god, damn it. <laughs> you can occasionally look off to the side and see the future. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> look out. Yeah, I was watching that before I see behind you. What? I see behind you, I was watching that. Spooky. <laughs> This is cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so what you just did was what we call playing into Atari. So if I go here, wow. I'm just going to kill you. Um, which I'd like to do. So if you want to keep that move, that's okay with me. But if you want to change it, me too. That's okay. I'll, I'll live with my mistake. <laughs> Alright, okay. That went into game, right. but that would just there we go. the center row, right? As you go, no! <laughs> <laughs> control of the center is not such a big deal as control of the center in chess mm -hmm. with Go. What you want is control of more space. So if you look at a 19 by 19 board, and let's pretend that black owns everything in between here, the star points, and white owns everything outside of it, that's exactly the same amount of space. So if you have control over all of the spaces, all of the sides, you're in just as good a position as if you have control of the center. So because all the stones move in the same way, there's no one point that you have a real power over. It's also harder to build structures that live in the center. It's easier to build structures with more open space against the walls, so right. a lot more points come on the outside than on the inside. The smallest living structure is this. Can you see that? How that's incapturable? So that's the least number of pieces you'll ever need to make a living structure. So these two are not linked, correct? Mm, well, this stone has four liberties, mm -hmm. and this stone has three liberties. But what are you going to do to break up that connection? Right. So they're sort of linked. Okay. <laughs> they're linked in the way that I can do nothing to stop them. If, <laughs> if you were in this position, mm -hmm. and it was your turn, you could break it up. Okay. But since you're not, I could play there and take this. Well, right, exactly. Not that specific turn because you just lost one there. No one for um, Well, I'd have yeah. if it was there yeah, and it was her she, turn, yeah. then she could take it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Aha. Atari. When you're playing with beginners, it's polite to say Atari when you're in a group so that it has only one liberty. It's not required. And uh, it's not required that you fix it. So if you want to play over here after I say Atari, it's your, it's your choice. <laughs> so you're telling She's me saying. that you have the option of blocking these and taking them out? Sure do. OK, so I should play here. Ooh, well, OK. Still. Let's, no, let's look at I can still lose it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm not a very good strategist. I'll say that right now. No, no, this is great. You're already uh... Yeah. OK, so I'm going to take them out. <laughs> There's pretty much no getting out of that, I guess. Yep. Okay. But this was a good move. You might be able to make a living structure over here. <laughs> so so I living mean, structure is just anything that contains it. Anything that can't be captured, right? So at the, end of the bo at the end of the game, the only things that are on there are living structures. Everything else, like, if we have this situation, right? Um, let's just pretend it's like that, and this is the edge of the board, okay? Maybe it's like that. Um, this stone doesn't live, right? Because it's not connected to anything, it doesn't have two eyes. So at the end of the game, this is my prisoner. Even if it's still on the board, it's, it's mine. It needs to have two liberties like to five. <laughs> it, right. Um, we call them two eyes, not two liberties. So, uh, again, in this situation, This stone has two liberties, not a lot. So it needs to have two spaces that it can control so that white can't play in both and capture it. Like the example we did over here earlier. The two Does eyes don't necessarily have to be two individual points. They could be two completely separate groups of points. Exactly. So so we have this count like this example. Okay? So it could be like this, two eyes. Black can't play in both places. It could also be like that, and that's a living structure. Because black can't play both in here and all of this at the same time. 
So it's kind of hard to see that at the end, like saying eyes is kind of hard for beginners to grasp. But um, basically it has to be incapturable. So you have to look at a structure and say, is there any way they could completely surround me and take me? And if it's, if it's no, then you're fine. And if it's yes, then you need to protect it or say goodbye. <laughs> I like to name my stones so that I feel really bad when they die. <laughs> this little Johnny, little Susie. <laughs> All right, good move. All right. If I'm gonna dominate, I told them you can go. play on the edge, right? Um. Well, you can see in this uh, example that we had, yeah, like, you, you play on. Like, it. I don't think I said it exactly, but it's been in the examples. So. Everybody understands that you can play here. <laughs> hmm. See how it would have been the same on the other side? Mm. If you had played here, I still would have played here. Still Atari. Yes. Okay. If she had played that other spot, um, she could have gotten out of it. No? No. No. How could she have gotten out of this? Can't she play right here? Oh, never mind. How many liberties she yep. have? Just would have lost one more piece. Right. So it's it's wise of her to play over here because in a sense she only loses one gotcha. out of two or three. Still keep coming back. Still alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a common it's a common game mistake. Aha! Fighting back. <laughs> I'll respond to that. So what does it mean that you're playing all the way against the wall over there? This Some is a common move called the monkey jump. Don't talk to tell. <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of moves have little names, as you might learn. Um, this position is often called the dog's mouth. This position is often called the horse's mouth. Just names for shapes. <clears throat> This is the monkey jump. 
But what does it mean? <laughs> well, why don't you try to do something to that stuff? We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. The monkey will jump. Jump. We have about 10 minutes left in the presentation. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to go with... We've got about 10 minutes left in our game, so... <laughs> Um, let's just try to speed it up for the sake of the video. Easy for you to say. <laughs> it, it just go with your instincts. Thinking about things at this point is, uh, I don't want to say futile, but... Premature. Premature. I like premature. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I know that! I'm sorry! <laughs> Because this has nowhere to go now. It has one liberty. Okay. Right, so. Which, if I went here, would still only. Still get captured. Have one. So I can just leave that man behind and worry about other things. This, at this is point. the power of the monkey jump. <laughs> <laughs> and this strange move is surprisingly powerful when it's on the edge. Because if you were to play any point in here, if you were to play here, then I play here. You play here and I play here, I'm connected, right? If, uh, if you play here, then I play here. You play here, I play here, I'm connected. So pretty much no matter what you do, I'm going to be OK in that situation. Where'd you go? Over here? Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Atari. <laughs> I suck at this. <laughs> no, no, no. This is, uh, this is good for me. You're noticing all the little tricks I'm trying to play. Except for the monkey jump. Well, no, you that can't really get out of the monkey jump. Yeah, that one's defensible. Yeah. No, the, the Atari. Oh, God, it now is you guys defensible. are putting the pressure on. Now I get to figure out how. <laughs> the obvious, the obvious. That wasn't it. Was that not it? That wasn't it. I don't know how to do it. No. That's not it either. That's not I suck threat. at checkers, okay? So what am no. I going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this stone, right? How oh, can you that? prevent me from taking it? <laughs> By going there myself? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to put you in Atari again. See, I thought you all were focusing on this one, so... Well, that one's dead, too. I was on the wrong target. So now I want to go... That dead, too. Oh, 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 no. look, look, I put you in Atari again. One Same of your group groups only has, has only one Liberty. Which group? Blades of the group. <laughs> yeah? Very good. And now you're defensed. You're all set up. So that's how you save that stuff. Sounds like a weird frog, doesn't it? Okay, Jan, earlier you mentioned there was an etiquette. Uh, I take it uh, they don't want people like trying to like really psych the other one out? Um. Because that would be considered rude? Well, sure. I, another thing that's considered really rude is something like <gasps> wiping all the stones off the board. Right, <laughs> just happened to me. That, so. over <laughs> um, or holding a pile of stones in your hand and knocking them back and forth. Yeah, this might be line. considered rude to some people or like or whatever you but these stones I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you know, okay. So you went here? Yeah, I don't know if I should have but no, it's fine. It's a good move. Oh, interesting. Uh oh. <laughs> Then on my nine is very cool because you get into complex situations. This is this is a very complex move. Who sees the complex move? It's very complex. Uh -oh. <laughs> For those of you who know, this is this is another this is a named situation called a snapback. It involves a strategy of sacrifice. I'll just show you. Please do. No problem. So you're black. It's my prisoner. Play here. What do I do? Capture? Uh-oh. My group of white has only one liberty left. Snapback. And that but doesn't fall prey to the infinite loop say, rule because you're capturing more. Exactly. The board does not repeat itself. Okay. 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 
So let's just leave it like that. Let's continue. No <laughs> problem. Good move. Bye. Good move. Really good move. <laughs> good move. All I feel right, like a um, muse came to me. And so we're, we're very close to the end here. I'm just going to make sure that some things are very safe here. Take a time out real fast. What groups are alive and what groups are what groups are dead? Everybody. This group is alive. This group is alive. Good. Other black groups. That's it. That's it. White <laughs> groups. White groups are alive. White groups are dead. This white group. You don't have to look at the board, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are any white groups dead? All right. So this is pretty much the game, right? Like what has to be done? What, what spaces does no one own? What spaces don't belong to white and don't belong to black? Yes. These four, this one. And what about that corner? What about this corner? Shall we play it out? Haven't we decided that all the other black groups? Does this group live? Then it's mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if we were to be clean about things, we can end the game like this if you want, right? And then these count towards no one, and these are your points and these are my points. Or uh, if we wanted to be clean about things, I would play here and you would play here and I would play here and you would play here. And it would be... She's so sure. <laughs> this is called Dame places that no one owns, and it's because I take a turn and you take a turn, it's, it's zero sum. Whether we count the game without it or count the game with it, it's the same score. Does everybody see that? Okay. So I had, I had three prisoners. You have three prisoners. No, you have four prisoners. Four prisoners. Um, so the dead stones here, right? Everyone agrees? This don't live? This? Dead? This? Dead? Any other dead stones on the board? Because what it, how is white going to take this stone? Well, where would white play? Okay, if white plays here, black takes. If white plays here, black takes. In both cases, black is secure. So it doesn't need to be the exchange. It doesn't really need to be connected. Exactly. Because it's, it's connected. It's just not attached. Right. Okay. So scoring, the very last thing we have, which hopefully we have two minutes for. Two um, minutes. <laughs> to make things easy, instead of saying, oh, okay, one, two, three, four, we just push things to their borders, so it doesn't change the number, it just changes the space. So I would do this, for example. You can see that's about all the same amount of space. And then you take the prisoners, and you fill up my space with them. Oh, crap. Okay? So there, so this is my score. I'm going to fill up your space with your prisoners. Okay, so this is your score. So what's my score? Uh, 18, 19, and your score is 5. 19 to 5. And that's the final result of the game. Any questions? 100 million thousand, but you know. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, resources, you're going to want to Google for Sensei's Library. There is all kinds of information on there. There's puzzles that you can play. The documentation on the rules and everything, so you can check it out, whatever. I have four boards, I believe, with me, and I will leave them out here or out there or wherever there's room for them. And people can play, and uh, I'm, I'm available. There's a bunch of other people here who play Go if you want to ask questions, like Seth, okay. Suturane, um, McFly knows a little, Christian knows a little. If you want to play with somebody, anybody else want to volunteer to play Go? Well, there's more people here at the conference who didn't come to my talk because they're like, I already know how to play Go. I don't have to come. <laughs> so, anyway, there's boards and you should all play. <laughs> Thanks for playing. It's a good game. Yeah, well, you left it here. <laughs> my point. Love it. You, you can take it back with you if you want. No, no, no. <laughs>
Here, I, I do have another board. Uh, you no, I should know. That's the one I board. You said you want to stay for the bottle of truck. Oh, do you? Sorry, we're moving around. Yeah, no, that's good. Because the back was cutting out, so we'll see how it comes out. Okay. Cool, thanks. These are a glass stone. Is it these boots?